Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here, and today we're going to be having a chat over Zoom with Andrew De Silva, who you may remember from the 90s band CDB, and for being on our show back in 2017. This time he's on the show to talk about his new solo single, What's Up, What's Down. Andrew, welcome to Rave It Up. How are you going today? Uh, thank you, Lauren. I'm, I'm not bad. Holding up pretty well here in, in Melbourne. We're doing okay. Trying to hold my head up high and just be thankful for the small things, you know, not being sick is a bonus. So we're alive and healthy and making music as well, which I love to do. So, yeah, you know, I'm okay. Thanks for asking, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? How are you going up there in Sydney? I'm good too. Luckily, I'm in Sydney, as, as we talked about before we started recording. So, yeah, it's a little, it's better here. I feel really sorry for you guys, but as you said, okay, just look at the positives. We're, we're slightly envious of you guys when you show that you're out and about, you know, at a cafe and... After this, you'll be moving to Sydney, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are. A lot of people are moving. So Now, I should say, actually, welcome back to Rave It Up, because the last time you were on the show was back in 2017. That's like three years ago. Can you believe that? Time flies. Sure does. Yeah. It's a pleasure to have you back on. And last time we had a chat, it was just over the phone, too, so it's good that we get to do face-to-face -face over Zoom now. And back when we last spoke, CDB was bringing out their album Tailored for Now, just to give you a bit of a, uh, bring your memory back to what we were talking about back then. <laughs> but I know that you're more focusing on your solo career now, but CDB are still together, right? I, I haven't really been keeping up to date with that side of things. <laughs> what happened after the album came out for you guys? Yeah, we're still together. So, you know, we do shows now and then you know for the people who you know that love obviously love. not now but <laughs> yeah yeah not now of course i've done a show for a little while but yeah you know we were doing you know some shows around the country and stuff and i think the last time we did anything on tv was carols by candlelight i think that was last year so we're hoping to do that again this year um if all if all goes ahead and um just quietly, CDB are also working on a Christmas album. Yay! Ooh, exclusive for Rave It Up. Something that we always really wanted to do in every Christmas, we always say, oh, we should have done a Christmas album. The thing is, with the Christmas album, you have to get the Christmas album finished in August. Oh, well, you got to get it finished, you know, like now. So it's strange to, to be singing, you know, um, you know, Christmas songs now, but... That's what you got to do. Oh, I hear a lot of people record that sort of stuff in like June or July, and I'm like, yeah. oh, that must feel weird. Christmas in July. Yeah. But actually, now it feels actually kind of good because it, it's like that we've all got that hope for Christmas. By Christmas, things are going to open up again. By Christmas, we're going to be together. Yeah, so I think it's it's a really – it'll be a very special Christmas this time because we will appreciate – the small things again like just being with our family being with you know you know uncles and aunties again you know what i mean it's that appreciation for the small things that are that are good that's good you get to be a little bit jolly now and before christmas <laughs> well we will keep a lookout for that and i could not think of a perfect better band to have a christmas album so so excited oh, for that you. cheers thank you oh, Back in the day when Let's Groove came out, you and your bandmates won an ARIA award, which is an amazing achievement. Where do you keep your ARIA award now? Is it in your studio or in your in your bedroom? Or where do you keep that beautiful award now? Well, I'll tell you where it first was kept for about a year. The, the year we won that way back in 1995. And I remember asking one of the guys, hey, hey, where's the ARIA? Who's got the Aria? Who's got the Aria? And, you know, someone had put it under the front seat of their car and oh, forgotten. No, no disrespect to getting the Aria because we were absolutely, we were so wrapped and excited to have the Aria. But I, I think that we were so into the music and, you know, just moving forward all the time. And, um, yeah, so 
um, n- now it sits in my studio. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, good. It's in a safer place than a car. <laughs> it's in a safe place, not underneath the front seat of the car. I'm surprised that you all didn't get one each. Yeah, I know. That would have been good, but yeah. So. Uh, you did leave CDB back then to pursue your solo career which you've been doing ever since and even went out and took the winning title of australia's got talent congratulations by the way was it hard for you to go out on your own and and be a solo artist and you know instead of kind of having that band there as your bit of security blanket (laughs) yeah yeah i guess so in a way it, it was but i guess as well um like even before cdb i was doing songwriting and my own stuff anyway so i've always been just uh in, you know doing my own thing on the s- side if you will and you know um lots of production work i love the studio songwriting all that stuff so after cdb there wasn't a plan as such like i wasn't planning to do the solo thing i just kept writing and i think once once i kept writing i realized that i was free and when I say free, free to write about anything that I wanted to write. I think when you're on your own, you know, like I had that, you know, like I was getting older as well. So it, 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 the song started to, they, you know, started to change as well, you know. Yeah. Like I went through a lot of stuff, you know, when I was about 23, 24. For like I went through, you know, lots of stuff as well, um, lots of life changes, and so I just started writing that sort of music. So the music kind of sounded a little bit more soulful and rock, and you know, like I was listening to like you know, lots of count, like um, um, Counting Crows and things like that, and just yeah. Oh, that's great! And because uh, you were working on your solo stuff even through CDB and before, but obviously you're m- most known for CDB. Was it hard to get away from that bit of CDB image and being known as the band member <laughs> instead of like a solo artist? Yeah, when people came to my gigs, I think um, they could see, you know, okay, this guy, you know, like there's another side to this guy that we didn't know about, you know, he, he definitely likes to rock out and, you know, um, but people that knew me kind of knew that already, you know, I like to play the bass guitar and stuff. And, you know, it, so my stuff was, you know, um, more on that Lenny Kravitz sort of type of stuff as well that I was doing up the CD. I don't know what I was doing, but it was just that, I think it was just that, that freedom to do what I wanted to do. Yeah, like I put a band together and, you know, we just, yeah, went out there and did um, lots of gigs and and that's, you know, um, pretty much what I'm doing at the moment as well, just kind of working on music that I want to hear, you know, and uh, and this time has been just such an awesome time, you know, yeah, to make music and, uh, yeah. Well, even over the years and especially now because, you know, everybody knows about you and you're just releasing left, right and centre and you, you have been dubbed like the all-rounder singer, musician, producer. Is there a certain expectation that you always feel like you have to meet to kind of keep at the top there, especially in such a competitive industry and new people coming in? Oh, yeah, you know, like, I guess I always try to run my own race as well. Like, there's always, you know, so many new artists these days, you know, millions of new artists. So for me, it's just about making music that I want to hear, you know, like, I'm always trying to push myself as well, um, musically. And, you know, with the new song that I've come out with as well, I just, you know, was just sitting here in this room because this is my studio and just just making a track that I needed to hear, you know, like something to make me feel good. And also, you know, talking about the world at the moment as well, you know, like what's happening out um, outside my door. There's, you know, lots of stuff happening in the, um, in the world at the moment. And, um, you know, everybody looking for the truth and what's true anymore. So, you know, talking to my friends on the phone and realizing that, you know, like a lot of my friends as well, they're just asking the same questions like, what's going on you know like what do we believe Uh, i don't know whether to believe this or to believe that so i thought you know what i need to music has to be written about that you know because like 
you know, Marvin Gaye back in those days as well. They wrote such beautiful music through the darkest times. And I just thought that's what the world needs right now. It needs uplifting, feel good music, but you also have to talk about what's happening in the world as well without making people feel really down. So it's a hard thing to do sometimes, you know, you have to lift them up. You got to lift them up, but you got to wake them up at the same time, you know? So, <laughs> I like that. Well, that's what music is. It's very therapeutic, yeah. you know, whether we're down, whether yeah. we're feeling good, you know, sometimes if we're sad, we want to have a listen to those, you know, sad, sorrow songs because we want to wallow in it. But then other times you want to listen to a really happy song to lift us back up. Heartbreak songs, it's all there. That's, yeah. that's a great thing about music, isn't it? I can't listen to sad music. Like, I went through years like, oh, yeah, let me tell you, when I left CDB, mm, that's when the sad songs came out because, you know, I don't know where you are in your life, but when I was in my mid-20s, stuff was going on, you know, relationships ended. I was really sick there for a while too, and that's probably half of the reason why I left the group because I just didn't want to go back on the road again. So a lot of stuff was happening. It was heavy. So I was definitely writing a lot of songs like that, you know, there was a darkness in the music, but, you know, people my age really understood it back then because we were all kind of going through, you know. But right now I'm at the point where I'm looking for music that kind of, you know, lifts me up. And I think a lot of people are. And, well, yeah, it makes you feel good and just want to dance again, but, you know, have a message in it as well. Mm. Well, it is good that you did leave and focus on your health because your health is the number one thing. Without that, you've got nothing. So it is good that you did that. Exactly. It all ends if there's no health. <laughs> and I guess with the whole competition side of things as we were talking about, like, like I, I guess we kind of just have to, in this industry, forget about all that and just focus on your own projects. And I think that is a yeah. big reason why you've stayed at the top. Just, you know, be your own competition. <laughs> and I think at the moment too, music is amazing. Like the music industry, you know, people do say that it has changed a lot and i know it had because you know i was releasing you know music back in the 90s as well so i understand that the music industry has changed like it's completely flipped now there are millions of people releasing songs every day but the good part about that the great part for someone like me the good thing is that freedom we don't have to wait for a, a record company to put you under you know like the conveyor belt for your turn okay it's your turn to come out no no it's your turn you know like and to market you which is great that's all fantastic but now you basically market yourself and you release your music the way you want to release it back in the day it was always about releasing a song that was you know three minutes 30 because you don't want to do it too long and but now you know you just release music and you know that like-minded people may find it and add it to the playlist and you know people are listening you know to our music you know um all around the world now and so it's an exciting time in that respect as well you know having the freedom just to do what you want to do you know and not water songs down i think we used to kind of have to water stuff down a lot because we were trying and which is understandable as well because we were trying to fit into the mainstream market which is which is great you know like we kind of had to do that but now you kind of don't have to do that as much because people listen to whatever they want to listen to now they've got the access of spotify and itunes and everything to basically find the music that they like and play and people people just know as well they know a lot more they know like their tastes for music now is so wide i think as well so people understand uh a lot more about you know music about everything really yeah so it's changed but it's great i love it i'm loving it you know making new music and even when you think about how the music industry has changed even about how you know us as fans get the music because back then it was always buying cds in in music shops and a lot of those music shops don't even exist anymore so to have you know that was kind of how you made your money by putting albums out people buying them but now with 
everything on, as you said, Spotify, iTunes, where everything can be streamed. Do you find you're like you're reaching a whole new audience now? And as you said, it's all around the world, but do you find you're getting a new audience just through things like Spotify and also your social media? Oh, absolutely. So that's, you know, um, it excites me because, you know, there are some people that don't want to move with it. They're like, buy my song from Bandcamp, you know, buy my song. Please buy my song. Don't use Spotify. And I'm like, man, that ship is sailed, brother. That ship is gone. You've got to move with the times, you know, and it is what it is. And I just think there's so much good music out there being made at the moment, like so many new artists that are so fresh and so exciting. And um, there's a lot of, you know, stuff out there that isn't that good as well. That's but There's just a lot of music, but you can find some amazing music out there. So, um I'm loving it. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> and even through COVID, it's kind of cha- you know, changed how you're releasing music now and even performing for your fans because obviously you're not allowed to go out touring. So you've been doing some live performances at home virtually. How, how has that been instead of being on stage, you know, with a huge crowd right in front of you? Do you feel nervous to go back on stage in front of heaps of people again? Yeah. Oh, to see, I think we're all going to be so happy, you know. The audience will be happy, but us... I says performers. I mean, nervous and excited and happy too. I think you know. I'm. I'll be honest with you. I'm more nervous doing the live thing. You know, like on Facebook. You know, doing the streaming. Yeah, because um, the streaming is so intense because you're by yourself, and you know that there are thousands sometimes watching, and you think, and you know, you can't feel their reaction to I, I think we feel so much from the audience that it's it's a great feeling you know but we don't really get that you know and then when you finish the song there's always that awkwardness of like you know you strum the last note you just strum and you sit there and you're just kind of used to having something and there's nothing <laughs> okay guys uh, so you end up you know making your own Woo, yeah all right Man, I felt good. But the last one I did, I was actually in my room here and it was really hot and I was sweating and that felt so good. I was like, you know what, guys, just to sweat and sing, you know, it actually feels like I'm at a gig. So thank you so much because, you know, like I wouldn't be doing this. But yeah, so the streaming thing has been really good, you know, just to keep um, sharp as well and keep singing and performing and you know um making connections as well with new fans and new people around the world you know people in america uh, you know they're like hey man you know i'm I'm like wow you know so in that respect it's been great but you know what i can't wait to actually see human beings and not to see my own face in the screen when i'm singing it's like oh and just seeing these like thumbs and and love hearts just come up on the screen (laughs) yeah (laughs) the emojis (laughs) I'm going to miss the little, you know, little love hearts, though. Oh, but, um, oh, well. Just everyone bring, like, little love hearts and, like, hang them up. <laughs> oh, instead of science, just little emoji signs for him. That's a good idea, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> for, for any of the future shows, guys, do that. <laughs> if they bring the poo one, oh, you know, that's, uh, that's not good. <laughs> You're like, oh, what did I do wrong? <laughs> we'll get your review after the show. <laughs> Is that a poo emoji? <laughs> oh no. Uh, was it also true that you were supposed to do uh, to tour this year with your Prince Purple Revolution tribute tour? Because I did see that on um, your website and uh, it was so sad. Oh yeah, we did have a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, this year, you know, there's a few things that were planned for touring as well with, with Purple, Revolu- Purple Revolution, um, which is my Prince thing that I do, you know. Um, Hopefully in the future it will come back. I did see that there was a date on the Abstract Entertainment website for June 2021 at Reevesby Workers Club, is that correct? Oh, cool, cool. I hope so. <laughs> Hopefully by then, you know, everything will be opened back up in some way, shape or form. It may look slightly different these days, you know. Um, no more 
high fives and no more hugs and so are you wanting to go back to do your whole purple revolution tour or are you wanting to do like another different tour what, what can we expect yeah. in, in that department i think i'd like to get back to doing um my original stuff again you know i think during this whole time of you know self reflection and making music again it's just reminded me why i do this and i you know like i think to myself man i'm still that 17 year old in his room making music and it hasn't changed like i love it you know there's something about the art of um making a track and a song you don't know where it's going to go you don't know how you're going to do it and then when you do it you think where did that come from like how did i do that i don't even know how those words came out of me i've never said that phrase before in my life you know like i've never thought that before but somehow this song has just birthed out of nowhere and then so i think i'm looking forward to you know um putting a band back together again and doing um my original songs because there's nothing like it you know doing the prince thing my god i love it because there's something about playing prince's music for 2 hours straight and if you've ever experienced all his music for that long now that music makes you feel great you know it, it, it's amazing and i've learned a lot of stuff as well like i've learned a lot of musical knowledge by playing all that stuff because it's some um, heavy music you know it's 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 amazing but yeah there's nothing like playing your own s- songs in front of a crowd because you're it's your you know your heart um your stories as well and um yeah it's a lovely um uh, lovely connection you know yeah so hopefully hopefully um doing more of that next year well keep me updated if you come to sydney i want to come see it <laughs> definitely thank you and you also have a new single out now called what's up what's down and i love how it is being called deep meaning wrapped up in feel good funk and it's so true it's so funky so catchy and it is great that you are making music about these hard times but still lifting our spirits as we spoke about before have you been feeling down yourself through covid is this kind of where this song has come about for you just to kind of lift yourself up I, oh absolutely so the, the 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 song just started musically it was just music at the start it was just laying down the baseline and just pumping it up in my studio here with a glass of wine and just just letting the music soak over me and and feeling those vibes and then i just started singing about stuff you know everybody take a side are you leaning left or feeling right and i was like and i was like what am i saying and then i thought i know what i'm saying i'm saying i'm speaking about you know this quote that i heard from a guy named Ravi Zacharias who said we speak of the of left and right you know like like with politics sorry left and right you know left and right but we forget that there's an up and down as well and i just thought oh what a beautiful way to to make you think about hang on a minute it's not just left and right there is an up and down as well so for people who understand you know what i'm talking about you know there's a spiritual aspect um aspect to life as well and you know for people who believe that you know like it's a powerful statement so i just thought I know what I'm saying now so yeah so the song you know without trying to get too you know um deep and meaningful with people I think you know people do understand what I'm trying to say you know that um there is another dimension to this not just our leaders leading us there's another you know leader that's you know yeah whatever you believe it up there yeah yeah there's a moral thing as well you know that's what you can that that's what people are understanding in their hearts as well there's a right and a wrong and you know that that lives inside of us and we you know we can feel that there's a right and a wrong and then you know talking to my mates as well and just hearing that same thing you know man i don't know you know what to believe anymore and i'm like yeah cool so so yeah so that's what the song's about but but yeah it is wrapped up in this feel good funk so even if you don't if even if you don't really understand what i'm trying to say you know you can still kind of feel good with it anyway so <laughs> definitely and i as i said i love that line in the song and i was like oh wow that is like two meanings to it it's so deep 
incredible. You're you're a genius. <laughs> oh, thank you. Because oh. you did also you, you co-wrote it with uh, Damien Smith and Isaac Moran. Is that their names? Yeah, yeah. Two of my mates actually. So we worked on some of the music, just the bed, you know, like just the chordal progression before lockdown. So you know, it was just um just the chords and a little bit of a guitar part and yeah then i forgot about it for a little while and then i found it again sitting in you know one of my hard drives i loaded it up and that's when i work on the music a little bit more and yeah just vibe vibe with it musically because i was gonna ask how how does that even work when you co-write with someone do you kind of just spitball some ideas or do you just each come up with a line and then mesh it together or so with those guys they were just involved um um with the music aspect of the song so the chords and the yeah um and the structure of the song but the lyrics and the melodies um yeah i just did that yeah oh, what a genius <laughs> no I don't, I don't know about genius, but thank you. Thank you. I, I'm here to be your cheerleader all day, Andrew. Just, as I said, big like fan of your music. But you see, Lauren, like I was trying to say, say before, songwriting sometimes is a strange thing. And I hear, you know, there's other people who say the same thing. Sometimes we don't know how it happened. You know, it's one of those things where, and you know, I'll be honest with you too, sometimes you sit here and you try to write a song and it goes nowhere, it goes nowhere, you know, and it's like, or you listen to it back and you go, nah, <laughs> it's not, I'm not, I'm not feeling that song at all, it's, nah, it's not, but then there are some songs like that one where they just come together and you're just like, oh, I don't even know how I did that, but yeah, <laughs> it just happened. Did you pump it out really quickly? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So once the song was done, it, it was out within about maybe two three months or yeah probably two months after it was completed oh, good yeah, job and I, I really want to also talk to you about how you've been getting through COVID especially since you're in Melbourne but I know a lot of our audience are you know struggling mental health wise with getting through it um, you know whether they are in Melbourne or not but not being able to properly see their friends and their family you know it's all virtual now and whether as you said what can, what can we believe anymore things like that but could you help our audience today about you know what what you've been doing to get through obviously music has really really helped you but is there anything else that you've been doing so besides the love of you know um making music and all that kind of stuff as well i think you know at the same time we can't rely on things like that as well you know sometimes we just have to get really simple sometimes and just be thankful for the small things you know like when i wake up in the morning sometimes it's as simple as you know just being thankful for the coffee that i'm drinking going yep that's a good because <laughs> you know the days you realize okay there's not much happening every day is the same you know it's like um living in melbourne as well it's been a you know a little bit harder for us here because we are literally not allowed to go further than you know five kilometers away and yeah so it's kind of but you know you just start giving thanks for the small you know like even going for a run going for a walk with the dog you know just kind of um looking around and just being thankful for the weather being thankful that um you know like, I miss the gym as well. Even if I had the gym, I would be happy, but I don't have a gym. So, you know, you start to get self, you know, you start realizing, oh, I'm getting flabby. Oh, you know, I think a lot of people are going through that as well. <laughs> I'm eating, I mean, I'm eating chips and watching TV late at night. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, but that's another thing as well. You know, you just got to start not getting hard on yourself and also start taking things a little lighter as well like i think i i think of my music as well like yeah it's awesome i love making music but there's also this other part of me that thinks you know like i want to be i hope this song you know does well you know and, and then you know there's a part of me as well that's just going you know what i just enjoy making music if 10 people hear my song and they like it that's a bonus you know i just gotta get back you know to the basics and just you know playing my guitar sometimes at home with you know by myself without an audience and 
just enjoying that. So I think, you know, uh, if there's any small advice that I can sh- share, is it's just that being thankful for the small things. You know, I've been thankful for the small things. And if we look around sometimes, you know, we can see that it was a good day today. You know, it, it wasn't mind-blowingly exciting or you know, something, or you know, but it was a good day. You know, the co- coffee was good. The weather was good. Went for a walk, played my guitar, hung out with my kids. It was a good day. You know, it's a, just the small things like that. You know, it's enough. That was great advice. And if anybody wants a bit of a pick me up, we'll go check out Andrew's song, What's Up, What's Down, now on Spotify. And I really want to know, do you have a plan on releasing like a music video in the future or anything like that? Because I know oh. that a lot of people have been doing it like virtually now and doing it, you know, just on their phones at home. So many ways to do it now. Yeah, if anybody has ideas, you know, um, any ideas for that clip, let me know because I've been thinking about it. Um, yeah, maybe. Let's put some ideas to Andrew, guys. <laughs> we all want to see a music video. God, there's actually a lot of things you could do for that. My, my creative juices are already flowing. <laughs> now, let's chat about your fans and changing their lives. On Instagram, you have over 5.6 thousand followers. That was something I only checked like the beginning of last week, so it's probably changed by now. Does that ever get daunting? Like, wow, I'm about to post a photo that's about to go to that many people right now? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Like, it's, you know, it's just um, one of those... Oh, sorry. Is the battery being charged? That's all. Um, <laughs> I think it's just one of those things that I don't try to think too much about as well. You know, it's just uh, the whole social media thing as well. It's um, sometimes I like to switch off from it as well. I tried a little thing couple of months ago where I just thought I might not look at my social media for about a week you know just to give it a break as well I think it's it's an amazing platform and, and I do love it of course like we all do we can't help ourselves but it, it's a um, it's a part of our lives but at the same time you know it does affect us all those likes affect us sometimes when they don't like something you wonder oh wasn't that wasn't that good or was oh they didn't like that photo so i think as well it's important to kind of take that stuff a bit lighter than what it really is i think we put a lot of emphasis emphasis on it as well and we can't help it we're human beings you know we've got our face and underneath it we got likes i mean (laughs) you gotta you know you really have to be you know so i just think it comes down to that point of just you know knowing who you are and running your own race being you know thankful for, you know like i said before you know if five people listen to my song and they like it i'm happy you know so it's just um i could not agree more about like a whole social media detox i've kind of done the same thing through covid because i'm like you know what I don't have to check my social media for a week and then I can just check all the notifications and there's nothing really important there for me anyway, so why waste my time? (laughs) Yeah, it's good to take a break, I think, as well. Just to know that, you know, um, you can do it. Life still goes on. Life's, yeah, you don't always need it. Doing what we do, you know, uh, in the music industry as well, it's, 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 it's our thing, isn't it? It's like, hey guys, I got a new song. So I think, you know, having that, time to not be on it um, is important as well yeah it's interesting in our industry because obviously we both need it like if it well if we weren't in the industry we're in i don't think i'd even have any of the social media because it's just it's a promotional tool for us isn't it but other than that i'm like when do i use it otherwise (laughs) yeah yeah i've thought about that as well and you did post on september 9th that you'd be lecturing the students at monash university for two weeks what an incredible opportunity to teach like the next generation of musical talent that's coming behind you how was that experience and do you plan on doing any more of that in the future yeah yeah i do plan on doing some more of that it was so amazingly eye-openly cool to see these people from you know, 17 to 22 or something, you know, and they were so um, amazingly, you know, talented, asking me all sorts of, you know, questions about um, my journey with, you know, uh, in the music industry, in CDB. And I think just to be able to to share that information um, and my story as well, you know, it's 
just a great thing to share with other people so they can know what not to do sometimes as well and you know uh, what to do and you know um give them encouragement as well and there's some amazing songwriters you know that i came across you know and um yes yeah, singers and musicians as well so good to be a part of that you know yeah can't wait to do that again yeah hopefully there's even some more opportunities with different universities and things like that for you in the future who would have thought you know that i'd be a lecturer <laughs> yeah because i never went to university myself so you know um i never went to university or, or anything like that as well but you know being um in the music industry for so long you kind of realize okay like i do have some knowledge that i can share with people now because it's just i've just you know i've lived through it and yeah but you know just being around that new fresh young people with these new ideas and stuff you realize okay you guys have got some new ideas and this is where you know this is where the action's at you know so it's, yeah you probably learnt some stuff off them as well as them following your recipe yeah. absolutely absolutely and on the uh, yeah. 6th of august as well you did write uh, and i've got the uh, caption here stoked to be a part of the team of outstanding producers musicians singers and engineers working behind the scenes for the tv show about to hit our screens in a few days hashtag oh, yeah. channel 10 what show was that are you allowed to share that with us i was like oh yeah, channel yeah. 10. so a little bit of work as well that i do is for tv sh sh like um working behind the scenes so you know we're working on the music tracks so the show was the the show was The Masked Singer. Oh, you did yeah, The Masked no. Singer. That's awesome. Yeah, so, so we had to work on all the music. So there was about 60 songs throughout the whole show. <laughs> yeah, because some of the songs as well that we work on don't get played because the singer gets voted off. So that song, or those songs that we worked on get, you know. So there's people around the world, you know. So th there's a bunch of people like myself that work from their studios and we're just you know um putting all the music together putting the music beds you know it's so funny it's something we don't really think about when we watch like those sort of tv shows we don't think oh wow yes someone would have to be doing all the music for this show we're just more watching everything on the screen <laughs> yeah so one guy's doing all the guitars at his place another guy's doing the bass guitars another guy's doing all the drums i was doing all the backbone vocals yeah so it's just you know something that i do um low key behind the scene just a bit of bread and butter on the side you know a bit of work like we all have to work and that's um yeah that's a part of the industry as well that you know like people don't get to see um is the behind the scenes people that do a lot of stuff not many people know that i do it but i guess now they do <laughs> <laughs> i was like hashtag channel 10 all right it's gonna be a channel 10 tv show mm. <laughs> that's what i thought i'd ask today there you go that's a big reason why I do this show, to really get a behind the scenes of like the whole industry and things that we just don't think about. So I think everyone's going to have a whole new respect for, you know, your job and just TV shows like The Masked Singer. So good job. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'll, I'll thank be you. keeping an eye out for more of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And even though you've already achieved so much in your career, Andrew, what else can we expect from you in the future? Do you have some more stuff in the pipeline? Some more songs? Album? Yeah, I've got some new music, of course, that I'm thinking, I'm just trying to work out when I should re release it, whether I should release it later this year because we're towards the end of the year now, or should I just wait till after Christmas? But yeah, so the cdb album um which will be out for christmas and some new music from me next year oh you know i just like i was saying i just hope to actually see some other human beings in the audience <laughs> that's what i want to do i want to see some other human beings in the flesh um you know that's that's as far as i'm kind of looking at the moment lauren i haven't really looked any further than mid next year you know doing gigs and uh you know just staying healthy and um uh, especially right now with everything being so unknown in melbourne right now i can understand but we are so looking forward to new songs especially that cdb album we're gonna have to get you back on the show to have a chat about it yeah yeah with my christmas hat on <laughs> yes we'll both wear our christmas hats <laughs> And do you have any advice for our 
audience today, people listening on our podcast or watching the YouTube video that might want to follow their dreams of becoming a singer or music producer, all the many, many oh. things that you do in your life? Oh, listen, you know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different roads to take, but I will say that it's a roller coaster ride. You know, uh, I think the music industry is an amazing thing. Like it's it's. Uh, so I mean, it's so rewarding in so many different ways, but you got to be ready for that ride. So don't, because you'll be up one month, you'll be up, and a couple of months later, you'll be in a bit of a low where there's not much, you know, um, happening for a little while. So you really have to love the art, because making music is an art. It's an art form. Um, it's expression. The music music industry um, is a business so as long as you understand that and there's once they come together it's great but you gotta love what you do yeah and don't just do it for the fame or the money you know i think mm, uh, more than that, yeah people have kind of figured yeah. out from all my interviews that you don't make a lot of money unless you're like you know Justin Bieber or something, you know, you're probably yeah. going to have so many years working for nothing and that's yeah. why these interviews are such an eye-opener that you've really just got to love it and have the passion for it so you can get through those down times, as you mentioned. But it is rewarding as well, you know, there's nothing There's nothing like re releasing something that you've made, there's nothing like singing a song in front of people, I mean, those are the things that we live for, you know, and those are the things of that, of that sharing, that vibe and that feeling of music, I mean, that's why we do it, you know, it's so, you just know as well, if you're meant to be doing this, you know, it's like, what can you offer the world, you know, like, if that's your gift to the world, you just got to give it to people, and it's as simple as that. And then to hear from like your fans that you're actually like your song has changed their life or they made them feel better like that's what we live for as well we want to hear that we're making a difference so good job for what's up what's down that's definitely making a difference thanks lauren thank you you're so welcome and i know that we i did ask you this question last time you're on the show but your answer may have changed what is this is probably one of the most important questions we ask on this show and i even made a book about it <laughs> knowing what you know now what would you tell your 14 year old self oh no i would i would tell my 14 year old self i said mate just be true to yourself and don't oh man <laughs> well, it's, it's the people that spend the hours that are successful as well it, it, the people that that put the time in they're the ones that um, get really good, you know. So just put the time in and just, don't, you know, don't waste time. Because I think, you know, sometimes, you know, um, during my life I used to take things easy and I used to just, you know, um, I used to party a little bit and not worry about tomorrow and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's the ones that really put the time in and, you know, like and spend the time working on their art because the only thing that really separates a genius is the hours he's put in. When you see a guitarist and he's amazing and he's playing really well and you think, oh, I could never be like him. Yeah, you probably could. If you put the hours that that guy has put into the hours, it's all hours. You know, I don't know anyone that has just picked up an instrument and gone, hey, this is great. Look at me. I play. Uh, oh, I don't know. This is. I like the piano. It's good fun. Yeah, yeah. Nah. That person has put in hours. So, I, you know, I, I just say to my 14 year old self, just practice harder, man. Just practice harder and just keep playing in, in your bedroom. Just keep playing those scales. Keep singing because, uh, yeah. Well, I think we're going to be putting you in the second book <laughs> since you're in the first book already for our viewers. Oh, I'll Andrew be honoured. Yeah, yeah cool. Andrew is in our first book. So go check out his first quote in our first book. But there you go. If we make a second book, you're in it again. That was a great quote. <laughs> That's a great idea as well, by the way. Look, I'm sure um, lots of people have already told you that, I'm sure. But it, it is such a great idea, you know, because in hindsight, we learn so much as we travel down the road you know but um yeah it's nice to go back and and to talk to yourself you know dude what are you doing especially 14 it's such like a pivotal age like you've just turned up just after 13 so you're just starting out as a teenager 
and it's so much the time that we care way too much about what people think and probably don't know what we want to do when we grow up, things like that. Um, so I think it was just a perfect age and it's a question I've asked in every single one of my interviews and it's always such an eye opener for people to talk about like their childhood so that's why I was like what a great book idea just to have it all there a bit of a coffee table book you can just flip to whatever quote yeah. you want and I was just so privileged to have you in it so thank you very much <laughs> oh, thank you Lauren thank you for having me thank you oh, you're welcome and thank you for coming on the show again just consider it your second home just come on whenever you like <laughs> weekly morning chats <laughs> yes We'll, we'll get our wine and we'll have a little bit of a chat again. Yeah. <laughs> and before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you or find out what you're up to in the future, where should they go? What social media should we go follow? Oh, you can follow me at Andrew De Silva Music on Instagram. I think it's Andrew De Silva um, Music as well on my Facebook page, or it's just you know um, just Andrew De Silva. They're probably the best to places so yeah send me a message um if there's anything you want to know about my music or yeah you know um let me know what you guys think of the new songs you know with an emoji not a poo emoji you know hopefully hopefully not a poo emoji or you know um but hopefully something better than <laughs> but if that's what you think let me know that's all right <laughs> to have constructive criticism if you don't like it but i don't see why anybody would not like it. we could start a new thing it could be a good thing you know like hey man yeah this is good as shit like i don't know how that works <laughs> like the word fat you know that's good now you know man it's fat man you know <laughs> what does this world come to <laughs> as i said it's a pleasure to have you on the show it's been so much fun we've actually spoken a lot longer than we thought we would have but come on we're we're at home, you know. Why not? Exactly. It was. It's actually just brightened up my day. So thank you so much. Thanks, Lon. Thanks for having me. And yeah, thanks for the chat. Really cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's get you back on around Christmas, and we can chat about the Christmas album. Talk about your Done. favorites, and just get in the Christmas spirit. That'd be nice. Get jolly. Put our Christmas hats on. That sounds great. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. We'll keep in contact, and we'll make it happen, Andrew. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Thank you. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, visit our website, raveituptv.com. And also remember, we have our new podcast series on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. So go check it out now and also share it with your friends. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.